of the sort of distinctive features of anthropology at Goldsmiths, I think, is the opportunity that students also develop and take up of, of doing uh, research in London and recognising what an incredible resource London is for doing research, but also recognising the role that a, a city like London plays for challenging some of the concepts that we bring to our research. And I think it's that sort of double relationship uh, with London and anthropology that's so interesting that we try to sort of look at within the Goldsmiths department. Right from the very beginning of the course, uh, we're encouraging students to, to think through uh, London. And London poses challenges uh, to anthropology in the sense that anthropologists traditionally worked in small-scale societies where they could kind of know, they could have some feeling of knowing the borders, the contours of what they're working with. And of course, obviously, with an enormous city like London, the flow of people through it and objects, uh, it's absolutely impossible to ever know the city. There are different ways through which people engage with the city. And this, of course, from our department uh, point of view, is, is wonderful because it, there's, a, there's an endless plethora of possibilities of things that people can and must might uh, study within London. So we have, uh, right from the first year, we have a course which takes students out and about uh, within London where they explore particular themes, it may be globalisation, it may be issues to do with markets, it may be issues to do with poverty or inequality, but they will explore those within particular spaces within the city and they will create their own diaries and portfolios which are actually looking at you know, developing an anthropological eye or an ethnographic eye uh, towards London. My name is um, Chris Wright and I teach the Anthropology of London course, uh, which is the first year undergraduate course. We get a lot of our students who are new to London, so partly it's a way of making them think about their environment, to think about the surrounding they're in and the particularities of being in London. So it's using London as a particular kind of resource for doing bits of kind of bits of field work, little bits of field work exercises, but also it brings out a lot of the general themes about anthropology that you look at in your first year. It's not anthropology in London, it's anthropology of London. So if you think about something as, as vast and as complicated as London as a metropolis, where are you going to start as an anthropologist? Are you going to now, you're going to define a small little group, a little community. You're going to look at Greek Cypriots. You're going to look at Nigerian immigrants. You're going to look at, you know, you're going to try and define some little field. Or how are you going to start to map out all these complexities between people and, and all those kind of networks that are involved in them? Is you're going to go out and do lots of things. So we we do have some kind of in-class things, and we have a kind of lecture, and we have some theory involved. But quite a lot of it involves you being out on the streets doing things with people. So some of that is you do a, a kind of mapping project. So you have to kind of think about the various ways in which London has been represented through maps and how maps are tied to political intentions or tied to specific ends or kind of reveal certain kinds of information and hide others. So what you will involve as a student is you have to go out and make your own maps of London. Um, and people do that with their kind of senses. You might map your particular area where you live through the kinds of rubbish you find on the street and what kinds of what that tells you about what's going on in that area. You might make a sound map. You might think about all the kind of sounds that you hear and what that tells you. People do kind of smell maps and again very similar different things. But the premise is, is that you're learning stuff that's, that's involving general anthropological concerns but through thinking about your own environment. When, one of the things about being an anthropologist is you need to be a very good observer, okay? And that you train your observation on certain things. So part of the course is designed to make you think about the kinds of things that you might overlook in your environment, but that actually can give an awful lot of anthropological information. When students come uh, to the anthropology department, they 
they learn through London in the first year. Uh, but in a sense, we, we try to maintain this interest in London throughout uh, the degree. So once they're in the second year, one of the courses they take is, is a course about uh, anthropology and the visual, which is a research-based course, where again, they're doing developing projects uh, on their own terms. And although not all of those projects are explicitly about the city, many of them, simply by dint of the fact that we're in the city, will in fact be about exploring uh, different aspects of the city. So our students learn very early on that anthropology is not uh, necessarily about going off uh, to the tribal and exotic places, but that it's much more about understanding the extraordinary variety of sort of cultural possibilities, in a sense, uh, that are on our doorstep as much as it's about anything else. You've just got to start believing in yourself. No matter where you come from, you've got to not see it as a curse, you've got to see it as a gift. Because mm -hmm. it, it's all we know, really, isn't it? Like, we don't know no different. We see things on TV, we've got ideals of where we could be, but we're here. Mm -hmm. We only can come from where we've come from, and we're trying. So, yeah, I'm still trying, yeah, I'm still being positive, but there ain't no one helping, there ain't no one that's going to do it, so I've got to do it myself. La casa estaba un poco hecha una ruina y nosotros mismos la hemos ido preparando, la hemos ido reformando y tal. Y Ahora mismo es una casa perfectamente habitable. Vivimos como ocho o nueve personas y bien, todos son, la mayoría son españoles, menos dos que son ingleses. Son Of course, within our department, we also have a strong uh, visual uh, focus, and uh, there have been a lot of students who've got involved uh, with museums, with museum collections, with analysing exhibitions, with getting involved in the process of, of contributing towards exhibitions, and so on. So this is another area that I think we've we've developed uh, quite extensively with some of our students. My name is Katie, um, I am on the BA Anthropology degree at Goldsmiths and I'm in my final year. Um, Mahogany is where I carried out my fieldwork for my third year dissertation final project. Mahogany Carnival Arts is a group of multidisciplinary artists that create carnival costumes and also seek to educate others about carnival arts. I carried out participant observation by becoming a costume technician here. So I mostly worked in the sewing room. Occasionally I worked in kind of foam sculpture as well, but um, most of the time I was kind of sewing cakes like these. Working as a costume technician, that was my way of learning about the skills and the materiality of the group and uh, kind of their history as well. Um, I am curating an exhibition of five of the five displays of costumes along with some large-scale prints of photographs which I took last summer during my fieldwork and they're going to be displayed at the Brent Museum um, in Wilsdon. Whilst I was musing on how to kind of uh, document my fieldwork, um, whilst I would kind of write a diary every day, um, I would also, I also wanted a lot of visual kind of uh, research because it, you know the nature of costumes is that it is so visual. Um, so when I was kind of working out how I could negotiate taking photographs, I took lots of photographs and um, immediately got them printed and the next day I came and gifted them to the people here so they would have pictures of their grandchildren or pictures of themselves performing and they all enjoyed the pictures so much that um, when it came to the carnival weekend they would actively kind of seek me out and ask me to take photographs and 
I did the same thing again. I brought them back so that they could share the photographs. It wasn't just for me. So London, of course, contains not only this, this hugely varied population, which is always changing in its permutations at any given time, but also uh, a variety of institutions that our students get involved with. So we have students, for example, on our, some of our MA pro, uh, programs who would go on placements uh, in particular institutions. They might be working with a development institution, they might be working in a human rights organization, they might be working uh, with refugees in a local community, they might be working about you know, the reclaiming of space or the development of allotments. There's a whole variety of different ways in which uh, students get engaged with things that are happening uh, within the city. Everyone can see the logic in growing more food in the city, but lots of people don't think it's possible. The people who are involved in food growing are really trying to demonstrate for themselves as much as anyone else that it is possible to, to grow food and make a living and make a sustainable project out of growing and selling food. It's a movement but it's a small one. The amount of people who are actually growers, who are growing food and working in commercial projects uh, are very, very few. 10, 15 growers in London. في غزلان هاي المنطقة اسمها ريتشمنت بارك طبعا فيها غزلان كتير بأنواع مختلفة وصدقين هالغزلان هوني مدللين أكثر من كل الشعب العربي يعني كل الشعب العربي حطيه بميزان وحط هالغزلان يلي بريتشمنت بارك بتنزل كفة الميزان تبعت الغزلان أكثر من الشعب العربي كلياتهم الله يسامح حق همنا شو عملوا فينا وين بدهم يهربوا من عقاب رب العالمين ما بعرف To me it was pretty fun. It's nothing like how it is now. Um, where you, you could leave your doors open, anyone would walk in that you knew. You could leave a key on the door and just, you know, let yourself in. You can't do that now. My name is uh, King Lang. Uh, I originally come from Vietnam. I'm a Chinese myself, but I I came to England about a long time ago, back in 19 at the end of 1979. Hi, my name is Claire Luswan, and I did my PhD at Goldsmith about Chinese gamblers in London under the supervision of Rebecca Cassidy. And now I'm doing a postdoc still at Goldsmith and his time is about spread betting. The anthropologist um, Thomas Hansen talks about urban charisma and, and the charisma of cities. And I think uh, London is, is, is precisely one of these cities where one can sense that charisma. And I think that charisma enters into the work of many of the students in this department. And that's one of the things that's very exciting about being a member of staff in the department, it, it is also to see uh, the, 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 the kind of excitement and engagement that students have uh, with the city that, that's endlessly refreshing because it, 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 it renews one's own engagement with the city. My name is Teresa. I um, just finished my undergraduate degree at Goldsmiths in Anthropology and Media uh, last year. And I did my research for my dissertation uh, at this estate, which is Haggerston Western Kingsland Estate, um, about um, the fact that it's being demolished and trying to make sense of that transition, what it means to the residents, what possibilities and consequences it might have. Doing that, I followed six different residents from the estate over a period of time. 
interviewed them in their flat. Some of them were still living in their old estate. Some of them had been um, temporarily re reallocated to an, another other buildings, and it was kind of trying to get get a sense of, of different ideas of home and what this move means to people, and and how that affects how people see themselves and, and the people they share the place with. So doing research in London has been interesting for me because I'm particularly intrigued by, by the changes that happen both in the physical and social landscapes. So how, how these um, physical aspects of an, of an urban um, landscape affect how people think about where they live. And people here had been waiting for, for something to happen to these buildings for about 30 years and had been promised changes and renovations and all these things and nothing ever happened. At the moment you can sense a lot of hope as well for, for the new, new spaces. So it's, it's not simple. I think what anthropology can do is to make sense of and understand how this affects people on a very basic level. Another feature, of course, of London, as, as with any city, is that it sort of contains these layers uh, which resonate in relation to its history. And this is the sort of fascinating extent to, to which memory is retained and to what extent it's activated, to what extent it dissipates at certain moments. And we can also trace, uh, as, as, as students do sometimes in their projects, can trace the processes by which things become valued at certain moments in time, uh, fall out of favour at other moments in time, become regenerated or possibly recycled uh, into something else. So that kind of archaeology of the city, in a sense, uh, and the relationship that people maintain to the built infrastructure, I think is a very important element of, of the urban anthropology course, for example. My name's Audrey Allwood and I'm doing some research called Episode to Episodes, Afro-Caribbean Life Stories from the 1920s to 2012. Um, that's based on continuing work out of my PhD thesis, which was on the elderly Afro-Caribbean community, looking at the, the, the idea of belonging. The central focus of the PhD was to look at the, the notion of belonging the notion of trans tr transition from uh, the Caribbean to England and living in England over a period of time. So it was looking at elderly people who had been here some time, 40, 50, year, 40 yeah, 50 years, and were now settling as elderly people, looking at how they negotiated that experience of, of, of some of the tensions of still wanting to go back home, trying to go back home, yet living in London at the same time. How do they balance and, and, ha and have a, a, a sense of belonging? you deal with these abstract ideas about globalisation and multiculturalism, you kind of have to deal with it in your everyday life around the college. It's not something that remains remote from your experience that you just read about. It's something that you actually, what the college and what the department do is it encourages you to make those links between theory, between the kind of theoretical things you're looking at, and what you actually see out on the street, what your experience of London is about. One of the other fascinating things uh, about cities is that there's such uh, almost a, a surplus of, of stimuli of different sort that much of the time one goes around not seeing or not hearing because one is set on a particular path. And one of the things that anthropology enables you to do is perhaps diverge from that normal path that you might be on and actually begin to explore some of those sort of hidden elements that you wouldn't necessarily see in the surface representations of the city or in the kind of usual ritual circuits uh, that you take. And this is something that our students have been, I think, very good at, is sort of exploring, in a sense, the unexpected that's always there within the city. And this is where anthropology, I think, acts as a really good counter to the kind of publicity version, the tourist version of the hyped up version of, of, of London that we get so often, you know, in the media or in the commercial sphere, that it, it provides a way, in a sense, of deflating that and, and shifting attention onto something else. 
We're very keen on our students learning beyond the classroom, not being fixed in what they understand, but, but actually learning through interacting with the city in various ways. And I think that's one of the great distinctive features of Goldsmiths as a department, is that engagement with London, the trips we take to museums outside, the London course which takes them into different corners of the city. And so that sense that, that London is our university in some ways, as well as Goldsmiths being the hub through which we will engage with that wider London.